I was 25, and uh, I had a little flight with my parents. I don't remember what it was, but I just argued, and I just packed my stuff up and walked out. I just couldn't do it no more. I'm 55 years old. Um, I'm from a large family. I have been abused a lot. I have been uh, through uh, a lot of ups and downs myself, and I uh, have lived in the streets. I had my own place in Park Ridge. Right behind the, where my door, back door was, was uh, dry cleaners, and I was working for them for a while, and I just couldn't do it no more. So it was hard to maintain the schedule and knowing what, what, what to do and where to go. And the first job I received, I worked for Marshall Fields off of Pulaski in Diversity for about two years. Then they laid me off and they called me back about 90 days later. And I worked there for another year. And then um, they were laying people off because they were folding their company. So, you know, I've had little small jobs here and there, you know, up until about 96, 97, and that was it, you know. There's no single reason for being homeless. Um, many of the people who are homeless are searching for employment, um, but it's hard to get jobs. Many of them maybe don't have um, the, the right education. Maybe they have a spotty job history. Maybe they have a felony um, in their past, and that past could be 10 years ago. Um, but that makes it more difficult to find employment. So they're not lazy, they just get discouraged. Now I'm just used to it. It don't really bother me, but I mean, I shouldn't be in a position, but I am. And it's something that just happens. I'm just like really trying to like find a place that I can really um, go to that can help me pull myself away from all the bad thoughts that I have in the past that I've gone through and things like that. So I'm trying to reach above a lot of stuff, you know. Most of the people that I see every Wednesday um, are not going to get a job anytime soon. They're, they're stuck and they're going to need services probably indefinitely. Um, they're mentally ill, they may have substance abuse problems, they're too old to work, they're too sick to work. Um, they're, just, they're just not going to go out and compete for a job when we have 10% of the population that wants to work can't get a job either. When they leave here in the morning, they go to the library, they go to the bookstore, and that's about the only places that they can go. Like during the day or sometime at night when I was on the street, uh, I'd usually sit there and read or, you know, just want to be by myself. Not knowing people here, I it's no one here but myself in Chicago, and people you feel you trust sometimes are not trustworthy, you know, you're back at zero again. So this is what I've been going through a long, long time. The people we see who are hungry or homeless are no different than, than you or me. They simply are in worst uh, circumstances uh, of their lives. I mean, I'm not really homeless because I have a place where I'm staying. I mean, yeah, I'm in a shelter, I'm still homeless, but I still have a bed and stuff like that. So, you know, I, but me finding a job would be easy for me because I got so much experience with food and retail and everything else. So it wouldn't take me that long. I think one of the most important things that our job counselors do is to encourage people because they're going to interview after interview. Many of them are, are for jobs that are not going to pay them a living wage anyway, so, but yet they have to take that job if they can get it. So it's just very hard. I've slept. Um, where the dumpster is. I've slept at church, outside of churches. The people, they sleep like in the stairways of, you know, like buildings and things. Um, that's basically where I see them throughout the alleys, you know. They sleep sometimes behind churches a lot, you know.
This is where Dubs used to be. And I used to <clears throat> go over and throw my blankets and stuff like that in here. Where you see that little open area? That's where I was sleeping for probably about a week and then all of a sudden the cop came and told us that to leave. So uh, then, and ever since then I have not come back to this spot. I hear people talk about um, riding the train, how easy it is for someone to just slit their pocket and take their wallet while they're sleeping because if you don't sleep very often you could fall asleep real soundly on the train. A lot of people don't care but you know, they don't, they're not in our shoes. They don't know how it is, you know, sleeping outside and trying to find a spot to sleep without getting caught. Like late at night, if there's no cars or anything, they'll just go pick them, the manholes up and go right down. You don't get like the, the coldness. When you go down there, you don't get the coldness. It's actually warmer. But I mean, you have the rats and you know, the disgusting water, I mean, but people go to the bathroom and it's, no. How many people are down? <clears throat> there can be, it depends on where they go, but uh, they can have at least about 10 people down there, at least. But there's no way I would do it. It's an unsafe world for women if they don't have um, people to protect them. They shouldn't be alone. So it's very frightening. I've been raped like about six or seven times, um, pregnant, had to get rid of the babies, the um, nervous system, um, you know, and um, that's a mental thing I deal with every day also, not having kids, never been married. I've always felt like I wasn't worth anything in the world, but I have learned to understand and know now that I am somebody I do count. I mean, we're still, the same people, I mean, we're just, you know, we're just homeless. Sometimes when you're homeless, people aren't really smiling at you. They're avoiding eye contact or telling you, no, go away. And so I think one of the most important things we do is provide places where people who are homeless are treated respectfully. This is Hilda's place where I actually stay. Um, up on the uh, second floor there is where the kitchen and everything is, the dining room where we, sl where we eat. And uh, the room there, the things there, that's where, that's where we sleep. There's 13 beds. Um, that's where I sleep is in, in there, over there. I was uh, surprised that over the years, the number of beds has declined. When I first was volunteering in this work, I did spend some time at the overnight shelter, and at that time it held over 40 men and women. Now it holds fewer than 20. Uh, funding constraints have reduced that number that the uh, connections can, can help. One gentleman came back to thank us after he had been homeless for a while. He was also working with connections. He had a job, he'd been working about a month. He had just got an apartment and he was very happy and he came back to thank us, but he didn't thank us directly for helping him get a job or for helping him get an apartment. He thanked us because while he was homeless, this, the hospitality center was a place he could come and people smiled at him and asked how he was doing and just treated him respectfully. I don't hear frustration or problems at all. They just want a place, a home to stay in where they can get started. They are so faithful. So many of the people have this deep faith. If I was homeless and didn't know where I was gonna sleep tonight, I wouldn't be thanking God, I don't think. I mean, I think I'd be saying, my gosh, you know, like, what, what's happening? You know, take care of me, where are you? And yet, so often I, I talk with people at the hospitality center and they are thankful to God for taking care of them that day. They're thankful for their for being at the hospitality center. You know, you belong to God. You don't blink, You don't belong down below. You know, you're. Whatever happens, 
you know, he'll, God will still always love you and, you know, help you out. And if you talk to him, he'll, he'll do it.